Yeah. What I'm going to present is uh, uh, what is the synchronous generator? Uh, what is condition monitoring? Uh, why do we need the condition monitoring? The history and reason. Uh, different type of uh, fault and the symptoms that uh, resulted due to this fault. Uh, I will explain. And um, the main part is uh, from um, the idea to technology uh, that's uh, resulted uh, into a patent. And uh, in this uh, phase, uh, we have uh, a laboratory set up uh, that we use for uh, verification. And the most important thing is, uh, is, it's, is the idea really working in real power plants? So we had the chance to perform tests in two uh, power plants in Kalvadalen and now. And at the end, I will talk about a remark of this uh, project. A synchronous generator, uh, it consists of a different part, but for us as electrical engineer, uh, the most important part is uh, the stator and the rotor. The stator, it consists of uh, a core and winding, and a rotor, it also consists of a core and winding. We put uh, uh, DC voltage into a rotor that the rotor start to to rotate and then we have a voltage three phase uh, voltage in a stator part. Uh, what is condition monitoring? Uh, condition monitoring is uh, what we are doing is similar to a medic, but the only difference is or case study. For a medic, a human being is a case study, and for us, it's uh, electrical machines. What we're doing is we have a checklist similar to a medic. We should check different type of symptoms that uh, the machine could have. And, uh, and based on this uh, symptom, we could realize that the machine is in a healthy case or in a faulty case and, and which type of fault or severity it has. Why do we need a condition monitoring system? Uh, the most important thing is the maintenance cost. Uh, according to the US report, uh, it's around 2 billion US dollar per year. They spend for, uh, for maintenance of electrical machines. And they spend 70% of this money for an electrical machine that they do not have a condition monitoring system. For Norway, we estimated it's, a, it's around uh, 300 up to 400 million Norwegian crown per year. Uh, in addition to that, if we have a condition monitoring system, we could uh, significantly re reduce the maintenance time. Because the consultancy companies, they, they only notice that the machine has a fault, but with the condition monitoring system, we could determine which type of fault you have, and you should look into that part, and, and in this way, the maintenance time will reduce. Uh, the third one is uh, if, if you do not have a condition monitoring system, uh, we could not avoid unexpected stoppage of the machine. And imagine if the power plant is located on a runoff river, uh, we could not uh, we could not stop the water. So it means that in this way you're also losing money. In addition to that, uh, the safety is also important. In a, in a worst case, that the fault could lead into burnout the machine. And, and it's really dangerous for an operator in a power plant. The, redu uh, the efficiency reduction uh, is also a consequence of the a fault in a machine. It means that uh, when we have a fault, you cannot uh, operate the machine up to its nominal power. Which kind of, fault, uh, which kind of faults do we have in the electrical machine? The first one is a short circuit fault in a, a stator winding. A stator winding is uh, it consists of a three phase winding, and each winding it has uh, multiple uh, coils, and each of these coils it has uh, multiple turn inside. When um, the insulation of the machine, uh, insulation of these uh, coils are degraded, uh, we will have a short circuit fault in a stator winding. Uh, the rotor, uh, interturn short circuit fault in a rotor, it is, it is also the same like the stator if you have insulation degradation in a um, um, rotor winding, we will have uh, interturn short circuit fault. 
The third type of uh, fault is uh, eccentricity fault. The machine, it's the the rotor. It's supposed to to rotate exactly at the center of the machine. But when we have a static or dynamic eccentricity fault, the rotor is closer to the uh, to the stator, and in a worst case, it could touch the stator and the machine will stop. Uh, the, the, the another type of fault is a misalignment. It's it's combination of the aesthetic and dynamic eccentricity fault, but uh, the rotor in an axial direction is also tilted. This this uh, this fault is kind of a, a worse type of aesthetic and aesthetic and dynamic eccentricity fault. Uh, the in a in rotor, in addition to a shaft, the core, and also the uh, the rotor field winding, we also have an end ring and also a damper bar. Uh, in some cases, um, we might have a broken damper and bro broken uh, damper bar or broken end ring fault in sail impulse synchronous generator. Well, what is the uh, symptom or our consequence of this fault? The first one is vibration and, and noise. When when we have a fault, it could uh, insanely increase. Uh, excessive heating, unbalanced air gap, magnet. Take uh, fields uh, or having a different level of harmonics in the voltage or line current is also a symptom of uh, fault. Uh, fault also could result into a torque pulsation or efficiency reduction, as I mentioned. But the question is uh, the, the hydropower plant there were for decades. But we might have a condition monitoring system. Of course we have, but these uh, these uh, condition monitoring system, they have some limitation. They are offline. It means that the machine must be stopped and we need to install uh, a sensor and then the machine uh, start to work. These methods are invasive. It means that we need to again stop the machine, remove the rotor, and install some sensor inside. The methods are expensive. For instance, for a PD detection, for a insulation uh, degradation uh, detection, uh, a power company uh, they say that they um, they bought from uh, from a company a condition monitoring system which it cost five hundred thousand for one unit, and this this. This system must be installed permanently, so it means that you cannot use it for uh, condition monitoring of different generator. And also, these method, these uh, these uh, methods, they are not really accurate. Uh, they need to reach into certain level. For instance, you need to have 50% uh, eccentricity, then the method could detect it, which is not really good. So uh, we have our research question. The method uh, should be online, non-invasive. It should be cheap, and it should be accurate enough to detect the fault in its earliest stage. In our uh, project, we, we started from idea and we developed a technology. Uh, but for this, we have uh, three steps. Uh, we need idea. Uh, the idea must be verified in the laboratory, and also we need it to test in a real power plant to see how does it work. Um, for idea, the, the idea is divided into two parts. The first part is uh, develop, developing a new sensor, which is uh, non-invasive. So it means that during machine operation, we could attach and we could measure the signal. Uh, and also it, it must be robust. Uh, we developed uh, the idea in a software and we achieved a really good result for different type of fault. So this one, uh, this uh, step go, uh, went really well. The second one is when we have this signal, we need to process it to by using advanced signal processing tool to get a, a pattern to extract this pattern 
from the from this signal to identify a different type of fault. This one also went really well. The next step uh, is uh, to verify the idea in a laboratory. Uh, we we have really advanced uh, setup in NTNU. Uh, it is a 100 kilovolt amp cell input synchronous generator. Uh, it resembles uh, a typical uh, Norwegian hydropower plant generator. It has a 14 poles. We could apply different type of fault from uh, short circuit, dynamic eccentricity, broken uh, damper bar, broken end ring uh, in this uh, setup. Uh, the idea also uh, that we applied uh, in this setup, it also work, worked really well. Uh, the, the result were very satisfactory, but as you know, in a software and also in laboratory, everything is kind of ideal. So we need to verify in a real power plant. We had a chance to, to perform a test in a Calvadol power plant. It's a 22 megavolt amp. Uh, uh, synchronous generator. It has eight poles, uh, but this uh, power plant it only has one unit. Uh, we in, we we performed the test. We installed a, a sensor. It was really quick measurements. We we performed all the measurements in less than one hour. And uh, after we analyzed the data, we were able to detect the fault in this machine. So. This field test also worked well. It means that the idea is working in real power plant. But as I mentioned, this power plant, it only has one unit. So maybe if we have, if we are in a power plant with different, with more than one unit, uh, then the, the noise from those could uh, interfere or result. We performed the test in another power plant uh, with different topology with four units. Uh, and we were able to detect the fault in this power plant as well. The remark of uh, our project, uh, the, the, the method uh, is able to detect the fault in online. Uh, it's non-invasive, so it means that we don't need to stop the machine. Uh, the sensor that we developed is inexpensive and it's robust. It has really high uh, accuracy. We could detect a fault in its earliest stage, for instance, one internal short circuit fault or 10% aesthetic or dynamic eccentricity. The most important thing is we don't need a prior knowledge of healthy machine. It means that the generator, they are working for it for decades. So it's, it's impossible to have a data from a healthy machine. With this method, we don't need it. The method is also able to uh, det determine a fault. So in, in this way, we could reduce the maintenance time because we know which part is uh, faulty. For aesthetic eccentricity fault, we could also determine a location of the fault in which direction we have a fault. We could also uh, tell the operator that the severity of the fault is uh, in which level how long the machine could work in this case, in this uh, status. And the most important thing is the method is, is able to work in a real uh, hydropower plant, even up to 30 decibel signal to noise ratio. So as I mentioned, uh, we started from idea and we moved into a technology by verification in a laboratory and field test. What is next in this project? Now we are in a transitioning phase from uh, technology to uh, commercialization. 